And here we are in my basement kitchen. This is about the only out of the way place where uh, it's going to be warm enough once I pour concrete in this thing to let the concrete set properly and out of the way enough where I'm not bumping into it every day. I don't think, uh, I don't think pouring a concrete mold in the middle of my living room is the best idea. So here's the finished mold. I coated everything on the inside. It's just the last coat is drying here with a water and uh, wood glue mix. I think about five parts water, one part wood glue-ish. Uh, 10 to one, five to one, whatever. And I drop a little, there's a little fan down there. I just plop this in the middle of the bed here and then it pulls air through to help, uh, help dry the little coating off a little faster. Then I will put all the cross pipes through to keep the concrete from flowing into those areas and I wanted the top 45 instead of uh, just square across so I just made these little braces and then I had CNC cut these already 45 and it doesn't matter what this fit is because the only edge that's important is that inside edge there which if I go on this side it might be easier to see that's the only edge that's important because that's the only one that's going to be visible um, once the thing is all demolded Don't have a lot of room in here, so it's hard to get the whole thing in one shot. So we'll let it dry, and then uh, we'll get onto the concrete pour. Here we have the mold ready to pour. I apologize for the lighting, uh, it's a little later at night now, and I have all kinds of lighting to try to get enough for video. Uh, the mold is finished, I used aluminum flashing for the tubes, and instead of bolts I have a threaded rod and a bunch of nuts, because that's what I had on hand. The blue tape is just just make them tight enough in the holes, so hopefully I can still pull this end off uh, once it's cast uh, without too much difficulty. I think I'm just going to end up busting everything off. I don't think it's going to come off nice. Uh, you can see the mold has a bit of a sheen because I put oil on the whole inside, all every inside surface. Uh, these two odd looking pieces are uh, just forms that are going to, I'm going to end up putting bearings in here and I wanted to inset the bearings so I don't minimize my space out here. And I just put a little draft on them with the CNC to uh, so they hopefully pop out a little easier. Uh, once again, all these cuts could be made on the table saw. I just have a CNC, so it is easy. Uh, rebar, I just bent with my boot and a couple pieces of pipe. The U1 is going to go over the headstock and the skis. A couple will go into the little foot there. A couple more will hook, or one more will hook up into the head. And we'll start slopping concrete into this thing. I got a little pan there. Uh, I was going to throw out, but I'm going to use that to lever my concrete over and my big mixing tub that I got for four bucks and a stick. So it's not really sophisticated, but hopefully it gets it done. Uh, I'll throw you on time lapse now and we can see how it goes together. Well, the battery ran out for my time lapse, but we are done. It took me about three hours of working with concrete, which uh, I, I respect people that work with concrete now because uh, I don't want to ever do this again. This sucks. It is hard work. Um, so hopefully, I got all the uh, all the voids out of everything. I tapped the mold and tapped it and tapped it and rammed concrete everywhere I could and tapped it and rammed and tapped it. Blah, 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 blah. Hopefully it's good. None of the uh, tubes collapsed. All the bolts seem to be embedded into something. I put all the way bolts in for support for the round ways. I cleaned off the top and leveled them nice, so hopefully my coffee cup can sit up there when this is done. And uh, yeah, and the center, the center track here, I smoothed out really nice because that's actually going to be the, um, or hopefully any coolant falls into and then runs its way down the track and uh, I'm babbling because 
it's late and it's time to go to bed. So we'll give us a few days and then demold it and see what we come up with. Yay! That could have turned out better. Not that you can see with the light like that. Beautiful. Of course it would be at the bottom, but... Alright, let's keep peeling panels off. Alright, about two days later, a little more sleep under my belt, and everything's looking really good. I've popped a few plates off as you can see and the ones in the uh, coolant track that I've pried out and I'm happy with how everything turned out for the most part. There's a couple little voids here and there but uh, I haven't uncovered them all yet because I haven't removed all the panels yet. But I'll just show you. So back here, uh, back here I had some uh, voids here and here where I could get the concrete up and under and I couldn't ram it in from this side well enough. So. Um, Mostly cosmetic, but that side will be fixed up. Uh, this side, same deal. It's hard to get concrete in between these bolts from the bottom side. Um, but yeah, I did okay. It turned out pretty well. I patched it up. I don't know how well concrete sticks to cured concrete, but uh, like I said, just cosmetic stuff. So it should be okay. There's going to be big plates that'll go on here anyways. You won't see it, but so we'll take this plate off today and see what we can find. As you can see, the brick there. I've just uh, taken a brick to uh, work over these edges and just kind of smooth them off as the concrete's still somewhat soft. Uh, I mean, soft is a relative term, but I can work it with a brick still. Coolant turned out nice, our coolant track. All these little, little bolts casted in there really, really well. Uh, once again, this doesn't have to be a reference surface because there's going to be steel on it and whatnot, but uh, it's, it's decently flat. I'll work off the high spots with a brick. And yeah, these came out great. These came out great. There was on the other side of this mold, which I haven't seen yet, there was a little breach between here. That I can feel with my finger just because this was so close and on the other side there's a bunch of bolt heads and yeah, once again, cosmetic. No issue, it's nice and strong. Had a little bit of settling with the aggregate, but can't win them all. Not when I've done concrete all of well, once. <laughs> the cool thing is though, we put that mold block in there the bearing I'm going to use fits like a glove. Plenty of room to move. It just sits nice, like dead flat against the mold, which, uh, or against the casting, which I, I guess is the point of doing a nice mold. So I'm super happy with that. So let's flip this beast over and uh, pop the rest of the plates off. It's about 400 pounds as it sits, I think, 400, 450 by my calculations. and. Uh, I can just tip this end, so we'll tip it, get the bottom plates off, and see what everything else looks like. And through the magic of TV, ta -da! Beauty. Worked like a charm. Here we have the finished casting, and you can see I removed pretty much all the plates. 
um, the last plate were removed from the front here, I noticed there was a little void. Uh, so I just left the back plate on so I could put these uh, tubes back through and then I just packed a whole bunch of cement uh, into here and then leveled it off with a board uh, just to make it look pretty. Like I said, this whole thing is structural but there's it's just so overbuilt that that's just cosmetic just so I don't have to look into a big void when I'm working with this. And I misted it down to help with the cure cycle. And it'll sit inside here probably for a while yet until I uh, find a way that I'm going to bring it upstairs as it's in my basement and it's heavy. And we will get it outside and carry on working with it. Here you can see those bolts, which are going to be the same on the head of the lathe here. I put tape around them to help. Uh, I had the holes bored slightly larger in the MDF. Um, and I wanted these to sit nice and square without being too difficult to pull, like once I have to pull this plate off. So anyways, I just uh, shimmed it up with tape, which had the side benefit of actually protecting all the threads from getting concrete on them. So that worked well. So they'll stay on until we get it outside, but I am happy with how it turned out. It's been a couple days and this side is all set up. So I popped the last plate off this thing and um, the repair that I was talking about happened right here. You can just see the different style of, of concrete. Um, everything seems to have bonded quite well. Uh, I peeled all the tape off these things just to see how the threads turned out. And uh, once again, this bearing face, perfect, just like the other one. Um, so now I'm gonna cut uh, big aluminum plates that'll go on either of these on both sides of the lathe here. And that'll be used to center the uh, round pipe in this hole. If I, I'm going to do this out of a uh, big half inch aluminum here on the CNC, but there's no reason you need to do that. Uh, what you could use is just either uh, angle iron or big thick angle aluminum and just put little L's on here and then put a cross bolt uh, through here and then that'll let you align the pipes and then you could fill these after. I'm not going to fill them, that's why I'm just going to overbuild it with this and hope that that's going to keep a uh, the rail is solid enough. And this will let me finish assembling the lathe without letting the concrete cure, because it's gonna take uh, like a month, few months for this thing to finally cure, and it'll shrink very slightly. I calculated it'll shrink about a 32nd of an inch over its entire length, um, over its full cure cycle, which is worst case scenario, but uh, this way I can keep building it, and uh, if anything ever goes out of square, I can still adjust those pipes without having them permanently locked in place. So anyways, let's go to the CNC and watch them cut. 